Hi and welcome. Um, I want to go through a few notes uh, that we're going to do um, to think about before going into the uh, workshop with uh, Nagin Etasabian, who is our guest artist from Iran. What we're going to, what we're going to do in the uh, workshop has to do with um, a number of different ideas, some very old, some not so old, but having to do with networks not, nonetheless, but some of them being social and some of them being analog, and then hooking into the digital. First thing I want to say is that networks are old. Uh, being that this show is in Cyprus, this actually postdates some of the oldest uh, networks, such as the uh, Achaemenid postal system in ancient Persia, which one thing that's very interesting is that the American post office still uses the uh, axiom ascribed to the Persian writers towards the uh, mail carriers. It says, neither rain nor snow nor dead of night will, um, and so on. The other thing is, is that uh, there have been mail semaphores, and uh, we can start going into technological networks such as uh, telegraphy, which actually people used it for text and poetry, um, so there was a creative aspect to it many times. So relevant to this particular workshop, and again at Sabian's piece uh, in pieces, is my reflection upon mail art basically in the 1990s begun in New York by Ray Johnson. He started the New York Correspondence School um, in which he questioned the notion of, of art and which would also then feed into the Fluxus movement of the late 1950s and through the 60s. Um, he began making art that went through the mail. Um, not just um, a lot of his work was stamped, used custom stamps, and had hand stamps, but people also also started using objects. Uh, this isn't too hard to uh, imagine because in the ancient days of the uh, American postal system, sometimes um, a child would possibly be uh, sent to another parent or to another home through the postal system, and all they really did is they just went along with the writers to the to the location. So the idea of a non letter or non-card in the mail isn't necessarily that new, but uh, the artistic context is. So, um, as I said, in the 60s, uh, in the 1950s, 1960s, the um, mail art movement became kind of folded into the um, Fluxus movement. Another thing I want to say is that the, the banana thing of Maurizio Catalan, uh, comedian is not new, as I want to show here, 1948. Um, Johnson mailed a piece of mail art to Ruth Zowie and saying, oh, wait a second, no, today I mailed a banana to William de Kooning, or is it Bill de Kooning, Ray Johnson. So, not so original. Basically, um, we keep doing the same thing sometimes. So, another network I think is uh, very much of um, interest to me is uh, the Canadian Fluxus artist um, Robert Filiu, who I got to know about his work while investigating the uh, archives of Open Space and Western Front um, in Victoria and Vancouver. And he created something called, and he was also a, a colleague of uh, one of my other um, other artists that I've studied is uh, Hank Bull. So he um, looked at this idea of the eternal network in which there's a piece online in which there are a number of music stands with people online, I'm mean, people of different groups such as Art Metropole and um, uh, Western Front and Open Space um, which basically are, are groups and artists uh, throughout Canada. And his most famous performance was the announcement of the Eternal Network, where everyone was basically to merely project good wishes across Canada. So in the performance, which was um, recorded on film, he's saying, okay, announcement of the Eternal Network, duration momentary, ephemeral, all day, 
whatever you want, just project good wishes to each other across Canada. One other network, also uh, largely Canadian, but also European. I've studied the notion of uh, SoScan television, which was basically a 1970s um, and 80s technology which used um, transceivers to take video and turn it into audio and send it across the uh, uh, satellite and ham radio lines. I've been interested in this in that there are some um, projects such as uh, the Vancouver series that were done between Vienna and um, Vancouver with Bill Bartlett, Hank Bull, Robert Adrian X, a um, number of other people like um, Mona Hatoum uh, throughout their four years and one of them, uh, I think number three, was called World in 24 Hours which was uh, recently uh, documented in the Net Art Anthology. What does this mean to me? Mainly, art is social. Art is a global community. Art is communication. Art is sharing culture. At the image to the right here, you might recognize this guy. Um, Andy Warhol. He believed in friends. And um, some may do better or less, but that's the point. Recently, with uh, Kai Kai Kiki Studio, Takeshi Murakami in his basically um, having his uh, um, other uh, assistants in the um, studio become art stars in their own sense is, uh, is also this notion of uh, systems of care, which I think is kind of the idea of art. But there are some challenges to this. Art communities are bubbles or boxes which we try to get ourselves out of. And I say own your box but think outside it because we all want to be seen. Um, in my time in Asia, the one thing that I found is that actually all over the world, and I, I grew up in North Canton, Ohio, um, which is its own community which has its own um, art scene. Uh, New York has actually its, its own bubble uh, Dubai has its own bubble. Um, I've talked to many Cypriot artists here is talking about Cyprus having its own bubble. So in the side here, I'm showing a uh, kind of a, um, a bubble chart, a diagram, basically showing um, overlapping and integrated bubbles saying, own your bubble, but try to think outside it. So assumptions. This is what the press sells us as to what the art world is. And I mentioned Catalan's um, comedian earlier, and I've got it here again. So basically, this is what I call banana land. You know, in the, in the art press, this is basically shown as our, as our goal. Putting a banana on the wall is an instruction-paced work and charging $120,000 for it, or at least the story goes. Or, if we want to talk in the current day, uh, board, I have an image here of Board 8 Yacht Club, which in my opinion are basically symbols of wealth made in crypto. So, um, and to this I say, uh, bravo, um, whatever. Which means I'm going to be out of the NFT community. Um, but um, not really, but good for you. So, Curry Archangel. Uh, one of my contemporaries from the, uh, from the 90s and early 2000s, he said something that I agree with him a great deal. My art world is bigger than your art world. And what that means is, is that if you think about it, the notion of art world is everywhere, opportunity is everywhere, and it's hardly driven by context and engagement with who you're communicating to. So what does this mean? Especially, well, for what did it mean for me in uh, Canton, Ohio? What did, does it mean maybe for uh, Cypriot artists? And so on. Um, in my opinion, I have this bubble diagram here. It said, it's good to be known at home. Uh, I generally was only a little bit. I was basically known outside of my, my own city much more than I was at home. Um, it's good to be generous. I try to be. 
And just as kind of a note is that uh, I was in the Venice Biennale without ever going to art school. So I mean the idea of, of um, somehow a degree as something as a, a guarantee towards an art degree. I prefer to say, Chuck Close is saying, basically being in the right place, doing the work, and having a few good breaks is um, basically um, something that says a lot. A couple of artists and thinkers I want to talk about just a moment, about getting out there. Canadian theorist Martian McLuhan. Um, basically, he uh, wrote Medium is the Message. And uh, in this day and age, we have networked media, which gets out all over the world. Whereas citizens of the global village, he theorized the notion of the global village, which um, could be any number of nested communities from listservs, social media, even email. To me, I think in this day and age, network media is a simple, uh, essential to finding your tribe. Another person who I think is uh, essential, especially in the show, to uh, understanding this notion of um, basically breaking down our, uh, our, our own barriers is uh, Morshan Aliari. She speaks extensively about the notion of decolonization of technology as um, network technologies are basically American uh, military and created by white men. Uh, although the first programmers uh, were largely female, which was interesting, and also the notion of championing others outside of this demographic to become more equitable within the um, techno-creative fields. So bringing this around full circle, my advice in uh, being a, in the uh, network creative sphere is to uh, follow your bliss, to uh, quote an old phrase, or just go for it. And don't necessarily worry about everything that everybody um, tells you that you should or should not be doing um, in regard to your practice. Find your tribe. And there's a little pun in that because I was uh, uh, part of the Rhizome online community, which was basically founded by Mark Tribe. But the thing I thought was interesting was that I found Rhizome, Thingist, Spectre, NetTime, Empire, and the Net Behavior list, in which uh, even from Canton, Ohio, I was part of a uh, community, although small, of maybe you know, a few hundred, if a couple thousand people, which basically became the uh, contemporary media art sphere that we have today. Help each other. I think this is essential. There's enough for everybody, honestly. There's, if you can't find something one place, find another. It's uh, more than enough. And then also balance between self-interest and generosity. Sometimes we have to know that we, uh, we as artists and creatives have our own sense of self-interest. But also, on the other hand, it's good to give to others. So balancing between the two expands and regulates. So the NFT thing, I just want to say a couple notes on it. Um, in this thing here, we have some uh, crypto punks, some, a little bit of Beeple, and so on. And to me, it's a new social medium. And how do you get involved in it? First of all, talk to other artists about it. See, what they're, uh, see if they're involved. Get on a lot of discords. Flood Twitter. It's interesting. Is instead of uh, let's see here. I was told once by an editor at Harper's Bazaar that for certain types of artists, Instagram was one thing. Before it was Facebook. Now Twitter seems to be a um, a big space for NFTs. Also, in my opinion, um, platforms are context, and context is everything. So there are communities that are different between. Uh, Foundation, uh, Hick at Nunk, which I actually like a great deal because you can get started uh, learning the system very inexpensively. And I think that's all I, I want to say on that. Um, so wrapping it up, I have a picture of uh, Dolly and his, uh, and his um, anteater, which I pr particularly really love, is that uh, I say, art is social, share the work, uh, art's a global community, although you know we do have our, our local neighborhoods. 
So get out there and be seen. Art is communication. So art is all about your story. Tell your story. Share stories with others. Have others share stories with you. So in this talk, I've gone from the eternal network to the metaverse. And in many ways, I think it's really just an um, evolution of basically uh, principles that have been going on with hu uh, human society for the last 3,000 years and expanding it even further as far as aesthetics are concerned. I don't think that we've actually gotten past the stick figure and our hand since uh, Lascaux and the earliest petroglyphs. But in the end, going back to Dali, be interesting. Engage with others. And I says that, um, what is it? To uh, wrap up and close, I'll uh, add with the immortal words of, of Keanu Reeves, be excellent to one another. Thanks. <laughs>